Five. Yes. Four. Three. Happy New Year. <laughs> and you don't even have to do a lot just to make those people feel valued in what they're doing. Like, I would be on, I remember, this is one, uh, I was with a team one time, and I was the Scrum Master, so when we did deployments, I was always on. I didn't do all, was, sometimes I, depending on who was available, I might be the one copying some files up, but typically I didn't do anything. I remember one time, like, I was really, really sick, but we still had a deployment that night. Like, I was on the deployment, I got off the call to go throw up and came <laughs> back on the call, but I had developers come back and tell me, like, just you acknowledging that we're having to do this at 11.30 at night, or I've had, I've had deployments going at 3 in the morning, like, the fact that you're just there yeah. with us, like, that means something. And just acknowledging that this is, yeah. as opposed to like, well, you guys are going to totally take care of this, and yeah. they're going to work. You guys are going to work the long hours because that's you're the worker bees, and you know, yes. I'm, you know, I'm over here in my office. Like, yeah. just doing little things like that, and just doing yeah. like, like you talked about, like the other things to help them in their life, just to make that easier. Mm -hmm. Like having, like I, like as, like I always talk about, like as a scrum master in RT, like you've kind of got to, if you're if you're really going to be all about like enabling the team, you've got to be prepared to do anything. You've got to be prepared to be a therapist. I've been a ride home. I, yeah. I've helped with childcare. Like one yeah. time, I remember a ride home. Like one time, the difference between getting something out the door that night and not was one of my developers getting a ride home. He's like, "Well, my ride's leaving," and I was like, "How much more time do you need?" He goes, "I need about another hour." I said, "If I drive you home, can we get this done?" And he's just like, "Well, yeah, yeah." Um, I remember one time we had a, a, a I was working at a place where we always had a deadline. We had one. That was especially um, glaring because we were so far behind and really didn't see a path out mm -hmm. to get features out the door. And I remember it was a Saturday and everybody was working. I think maybe it was just one person working. And this was, I struggle with this too because like I always struggle with, well, is the servant leader supposed to be there on Saturday when all I can do is stand there and watch you right. develop? I, if I could roll up my sleeves and I could still get into that, that code, I would. I don't do that anymore. I haven't done it for a while. And I'm, all I'm going to do is make you turn into my teacher, you know? So I feel, so sometimes I'm like, I would like to be there to show emotional support, but sometimes I think, you know, you're just going to be thinking about me sitting over your shoulder and you just want to concentrate. So, okay, it was a Saturday and it happened to be the last game at Old Bush Stadium. And we had tickets and went. And the best that I could come up with was, like around inning five or six, because we were downtown, was get a a foot long and haul it back to 23rd <laughs> Street and then head up the, to the sixth floor where this guy was trying against hope to put something together and let him eat a hot dog from the last game at Bush oh. Stadium and then go back and watch the rest of the game. I mean... That's uh, so thoughtful. Uh, right, but yeah, I mean... Maybe part of it was guilt driven because, <laughs> <laughs> right? Because that up. poor guy's there and I'm watching the last game of Bush Stadium. You know, it's, I don't know. It's not easy. Yeah. None of these, none of these, like, we could talk about it in theory all the time. Oh, well, yeah, well, I'll do the right thing. Mm -hmm. But then, like, some, you know, a situation like that isn't, that's a real world situation where it's like, okay, maybe I should, maybe I should not go to Bush Stadium. I should go home and engage in self flagellation while he's there and then bring him dinner. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's like that was a moment that you showed that level of empathy and concern, but it was probably like the day-to-day -day act of being empathetic or being present. He probably knew that, I mean, you're the kind of guy who would show up and deliver a last game at Bush Stadium hot dog. Like that probably wasn't surprising to him because that's potentially who you proved yourself to be as a leader up to that point, right? It's not just like a one-time event is my point. Yeah. Like you yeah. can't just like throw a party and expect everybody to be. Yeah, you gotta, but you've gotta build up that trust. But yeah. once you build up that trust, like people will move mountains. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. I was thinking when you were talking earlier, uh, I was thinking these these words that like I'm, I'm trying to to codify it into actions that you can take. Mm -hmm. um, and all of the, the, these actions, all these words that come to mind aren't, technical practices yeah. and they're not even you know you don't even necessarily no. find them in management literature you won't read about it in your mba maybe in a um an hr class mm -hmm. it like you talked about just recognize yeah. that they're putting in a lot of work recognize mm -hmm. the sacrifices that they're making just say it out loud or say it to them mm -hmm. you're really just do little stuff yeah. like i'll never forget 
we had a we had a when I was a release training engineer, we had a weekly um, PMO meeting where it was like all the all the directors, all the managers, we went through statuses, and one of the teams reported there was this bug that was just a nightmare. They could not they've been working on it for weeks. They're like, oh, we got that fixed, and I said, you got that fixed. You finally figured this out. Like it was just a nightmare to get through, and they're like, yeah. I stopped the call, and I had, a, I had a headset. I walked over to where that team is, and I remember going to like Bill and Tyler. I'm like, "You guys, you guys figured it out yet?" I'm like, "Fuck yes!" Like, <laughs> I cried, like in the middle of this meeting. I was yes. like, "All right," I'm like, "That was Seriously. a hard problem. Like we couldn't figure this like for yes. the life of us." But like right. just little stuff like yeah. that, just saying like having like if I were to say one thing to have, it's empathy. Yes. Yeah, and that was the other. That was the other word. Like you, right? So empathize. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't. You can't put any more practice around that other than just be a better human being. Yeah. I mean, I can't do what you do. You are skilled at a thing that I don't have the capabilities to do. So if I can't do that, I can't take that off of your plate, what can I do? That's the, mm-hmm. kind of the essence of, of servant leadership, in my mind, anyway. I wholeheartedly agree. And I think that's a great place to end. <laughs>